The selection of key variables is arguably the most important step in the disclosure risk assessment process. To do this right, we need to understand what key variables are and how they can lead to disclosure. Indirect or quasi-identifiers are variables that could be used in combination with other variables to re-identify individuals in a data set. Depending on the context, almost any variable could be an indirect identifier. Key variables are simply indirect identifiers that are most likely to lead to the disclosure of confidential information, including an individual's identity. In other words, the selection of key variables will depend on the context. There is no magic formula for selecting key variables, and knowledge of the data environment is key. The data environment is essentially the context in which the data sits. To understand your data environment, consider what other data sets people are likely to have access to and the relationship between those data sets. When you combine your knowledge of the data environment with contextual knowledge of the real life environment, you'll be able to develop what are known as disclosure scenarios. To develop a disclosure scenario, think through the motivations of a malicious actor, describe the data that they may have access to, and specify how this and other publicly available data could be linked to your data to lead to disclosure. While there is no defined set of key variables, common key variables in humanitarian contexts include age, gender, ethnicity, marital status, religion, income, location, and other forms of geographic information. Of course, there will likely be other key variables unique to your context and data set. This is why the more you know about your data and the context you're operating in, the better placed you are to select key variables. Let's take the example of a multi-sector needs assessment. Remember, identifiers like names and phone numbers should have already been removed from the raw data file. We know from the outset that things like age and gender are likely to be key variables. Next, we explore the data to identify variables that contain visible and rare attributes. In this example, we identify the following potential key variables. The district, the number of people in the household, and the head of household's age, gender, ethno-linguistic group, and marital status. Now we need to know whether our key variables are continuous or categorical in order to determine the appropriate risk assessment methods. Continuous variables are numeric variables that can take an infinite number of values. Income is a common example of a continuous variable. Categorical variables take values from a finite set. Examples include gender, where you might have male, female, or prefer not to say as your response options. Some variables are considered semi-continuous. Age is a good example. While theoretically the age variable could take on an infinite number of values, in practice, there's a finite set of possible values for age. For this reason, you can treat age as a categorical variable. You can also transform continuous variables into categorical variables by creating intervals. Common examples include income or age brackets. We'll see in step three how the key variable identified impacts the risk assessment measure that can be used. Now that you've set up your key variables, proceed to the next step to learn how to run the disclosure risk assessment.